This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work, chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sandra Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, sacred international journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earthwalk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. Welcome to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, where in a single moment you can recognize your brilliance and change your life. This is a transformational hour that covers an array of topics that demonstrate how individuals use their native talents, as shown in their name, to look at the ordinary in extraordinary ways. Albert Einstein once said that everybody's a genius. Why would one of the smartest people on the planet declare that everyone is a genius unless he knew that to be true? I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and in each weekly show, you'll hear the fascinating ways other people discovered the genius in them and what they were able to accomplish. At the end of each show, you'll hear clues on how you can recognize your own unique genius. All over the world, people have many, many diverse interests. And in that vein, people have asked about different occupations and areas of life that have highly interested them. People want to know how highly successful people have managed to achieve their genius mindset by utilizing the gifts that we see in the name, utilizing nameology science. Some of the letters we've received have asked about how someone expresses their creative talents and how does someone share those gifts with others in such a way that all benefit. Our expert tonight is Haim Solomon, who has developed his genius in the area of being a Hi, leading... I'm really, I don't, I don't know what months. happened. After finishing his education at the prestigious Yeshiva Kol Yehuda in New York, where he became an ordained rabbi, Haim took up his discipline ship under Rabbi Berg, focusing on three major Kabbalistic texts in his area of specialty, the Zohar, the writings of Rabbi Isaac Luria, the Ari, and the Ten Luminous Emanations. Part of Chaim's unique ability to relate this ancient wisdom to a modern audience in his time spent at UCLA pursuing biology and pre-med studies, as well as 10 years studying various metaphysical teachings, such as religious science, science of mind, in which he became a licensed practitioner and minister, theolis, philosophy, keys of Enoch, Buddhism, the Upanishads, and the Bhagavad Gita. I would add to that the Nine Faces of Christ by Eugene Whitworth, and you've got all my favorite texts. Anyway, <laughs> all of this wisdom is brought to bear in Hyam's work with students, his specialty being health, relationships, reincarnation, dreams, and meditation. He leads sold-out seminars internationally and counsels students privately each week. He's taught in major cities around the world, including New York, Toronto, Mexico City, Los Angeles, London, Rio de Janeiro, Sao Paulo, Lisbon, Chicago, and Miami. He now teaches and resides in Boca Raton, Florida with his wife and four children. Many people who have heard Hayam consider his greatest gifts as teaching in parables, as the marvelous stories he tells definitely help his audience understand complicated concepts. Chaim Solomon's name indicates that he has surrounded himself with wise leaders from which to learn, that he has a tendency to be a workaholic, is an avid reader, and considers family a priority. Chaim's name also indicates that he does better when he's in charge, and he was taught the importance of having a great memory. 
Welcome to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You radio show, Haim. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. You know, the list of questions for you that I have is so long that we're going to want more than one radio show with you as my guest. To start off with, (laughs) you teach at the Kabbalah Center in Boca Raton, which centers on teaching the Zohar. Would you please explain to everybody here what is the Zohar? Well, it depends on uh, your perspective. What most people hear about the Zohar, it's uh, an ancient mystical text. Usually it's considered a Jewish mystical text. But what the uh, Kabbalists, uh, or how the Kabbalists describe it, it's actually literally the blueprint of the universe. It gives every detail, whether it's scientifically, religiously, spiritually, etc., about all the different aspects of the world, the universe. In fact, uh, you mentioned that I have a a background in pre-med studies. When I was studying at UCLA in the 70s, you know, the, uh, the big thing at that time in medicine was cholesterol. And the eggs were practically the devil because you shouldn't eat eggs. Uh, cholesterol was going to uh, ramp in the body and uh, block the arteries and kill people and things like this. 2,000 years earlier in its written form, which is based on thousands of previous years of oral tradition, the Zohar wrote not only about cholesterol as the fatty acids from the bile of the liver, but it also described good and bad cholesterol. So the scientists were only 2,000 years behind at that point. My teacher, Rav Berg, that you mentioned, he used to say that, you know, Kabbalah is 50th century science, and we're now only in the 21st century. So there are many, many things in the uh, writings of the Zohar that describe facets of our universe that are incontrovertible, quantum physics, relativity, computer science, In fact, uh, one of the things most people don't know, and we didn't know actually until I believe it was the 1980s, that Sir Isaac Newton actually wrote more on Kabbalah than he wrote on physics. And his uh, copy of the Zohar, which was translated from Aramaic to Latin by the Pope, is still uh, in the uh, uh, reference library in Trinity College in Oxford, England. And he claims that all of his scientific discoveries came from his studies of the Zohar. Really quickly, since we're running out of seconds, is the Zohar for everyone or just one religious group? It's for everyone. It's the blueprint of the universe. We call it technology for the soul. And since every person on earth has a soul, it's technology and wisdom for every person. Great. Stay tuned to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, which can also be heard on knowthename.com. After the break, we'll find out how the Zohar is credited with keeping Florida safe from hurricanes. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Mnemology science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Mnemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, which is being heard on xzbn.net and knowthename.com. Our guest tonight is Chaim Solomon, whose website is www.bokabocca.com. Beforehand, we took the break. We were talking about the Zohar, and we have another question on that. We want to know what language the Zohar was originally written in, and how does that help us if we can't read that language? Oh, great question. Thank you. The Zohar is written in Aramaic, which, according to the Kabbalist, is the universal language of the soul, meaning that the Hebrew letters or the Aramaic letters, which are the same, uh, actually are particles of the light of the Creator, similar to like a photon. In science, we speak of particles of the physical light uh, called photons that carry electromagnetic uh, energy of light. Well, as a, uh, above, so below. So if in this world we have particles of the physical light called photons, in the spiritual world, the source of the physical world, there must be something that is based upon. And that's what the Kabbalists teach are the Hebrew letters, that they're not just letters... Um, an alphabet created by man, but they're particles of the light of the creator that took form uh, from the metaphysical to the physical when they come into the physical world, similar to, I'm sure many of your listeners understand the idea of a soul as metaphysical energy of every person's true essence. When it comes into the physical world, it takes on a physical form called the body. So this is why the body also represents various energies of the soul, which is why we all look different and why there are people who do face reading and palm reading and things like that, because the body is an expression of the soul. So too, the, the Aramaic or the Hebrew letters are an expression of the light of the creator. And so the eyes being the window to the soul and the letters radiating that light, we can actually, by scanning, just literally looking at the letters in the Zohar, activate the light that the Creator put inside our soul. Now, most people don't think about it um, when they read the Bible, but one of the most valuable things that people have as humans, divine beings, is free will. Free will was given to us by the Creator to make the choice to decide between the path of the light of the Creator or the path of the ego, let's call it, self-centeredness, selfishness, and illusion. And it's in our struggle to make that choice and overcome the desires of the ego to express the light of the soul, compassion, kindness, love, forgiveness, tolerance, etc. It's in that effort that we actually truly earn the fulfillment or the satisfaction that is the it's sourced in the light that the creator put in our soul. It's like the light is in potential and our job is to activate it and shine it into the world and on all the people in the world. So in that free will, we have the opportunity to choose the light or the darkness. And through that struggle, we actually gain the true lasting fulfillment. So the point of the Zohar in Aramaic is just 
a book of power and energy, and it just radiates that light to help awaken the light of our soul and give us strength in that struggle against the ego or the illusion or the addictive compulsive behaviors or bad habits, etc. And so, so the book of the Zohar, oh, sorry. No, that was, uh, we were just going to ask. So as you're looking at the Zohar and it's written in the Amic or the Hebrew letters and everything. Mm-hmm. Now I understand that that energy or that light that comes from the Zohar, that that there was an effort to put Zohars all around Southern Florida. And since those Zohars were distributed around Florida in those areas, no storm has landed. How do you explain right. that? Or tell us about that. Well, if you start with the concept we were just speaking about, if, if we understand that the Zohar is not just a book, but it's actually a power source, it's a conduit of the light of the creator, then as simple as in the physical world, light will remove darkness then how much greater the light of the creator to remove all the darkness called chaos, whether that's a hurricane, natural disasters, whether that's hatred and violence, or any type of chaos that exists in the, in the physical world. So the center's mission is to bring the Zohar to all the corners of the world, to remove all the darkness of the world and bring heaven on earth or peace to the world, which is the goal of every religion and every spiritual system. And I believe it's in the heart and soul and the desire of human beings uh, throughout the world. So by spreading the Zohar, and that was the work of the students in the centers in Miami and Boca, to um, distribute Zohar, they collected the money, they raised the money, they got the Zohar, and they went all along the coast, all the way up and down Florida, and handing out Zohars to the police stations, fire stations, um, where there were homes on the coast, Anywhere that they could put and build, if you will, a a barrier of light to help protect from the hurricanes. And it's been 11 years. Hurricanes have not landed in Florida, which is completely unnatural as far as history goes. In fact, even this last one, Matthew, if you tracked it, it kind of you could almost see it as if it was trying to break into Florida, and it bounced its way back and forth, back and forth, all uh, up the coast, till it almost entered a little in the north. And so the students themselves decided they've got to continue to reinforce that uh, light barrier. Well, this Zohar sounds so fabulous. How would one go about getting one if they wanted one in that Arabic language so that they could scan it and absorb the light? Well, you can... You can acquire it either online through the Kabbalah Center or you can come to the center. uh, If you have a local center here in Florida, we have here in Boca where uh, you study, where I am, and we have in Miami. So, you know, it's readily accessible. And in fact, I just share with you, um, because of the generosity of uh, a number of donors, we've been able to uh, subsidize the Zohar uh, to $72. I think that's fabulous. You know, seven and a half people have different perspectives of life, all the people here on the planet. So how does the Zohar relate to that? And how are our perspectives related to our level of consciousness? Well, if you boil every human being down, um, we're much more similar. In other words, if everybody was created by the creator, as the Kabbalists teach us, we were created with a desire for a sense of fulfillment, peace, harmony, serenity, to be... um, complete in life. So every human being is similar in that way. We're all seeking a sense of fulfillment and contentment. The only issue is, which way are we seeking it? So some people um, are seeking fulfillment, let's say, by stealing money from somebody, and somebody else is seeking fulfillment by earning the money. And that's where the chaos comes in. But the root of it is, all people are uh, looking for fulfillment. They're all filled with that desire to receive fulfillment originally from the light of the creator. But again, as we spoke about free choice, when we come into this physical world, we have the temptation, metaphorically like Adam and Eve looking at the two trees, we can choose either the way of the light, sharing, compassion, kindness, or a temporary way of selfishness, whether that's you know, anger and, and uh, animosity or insecurity or thievery or violence or what have you. But the beauty of the Zohar is by awakening the light of the creator in each human being, it's allowing us all to be on that same page, which is the root of every religion. 
doesn't matter the differences in religion. The common factor is love your neighbors yourself, um, be kind to your enemies, forgive, forgiveness, etc. Uh, the golden rule. And so as people will awaken to that consciousness and realize it's in their own best interest to be kind and compassionate because they come to understand what goes around comes around. So then the more we, we express and we share the light of the creator through kindness and love and charity and compassion and forgiveness and tolerance, that's going to make a circuit through the cosmos and come back to the person. So when a thief realizes that they're only going to lose by stealing, when they come to their own understanding of that, then they'll never steal because they don't want to lose. They think they're gaining by stealing. But when they come to understand the laws of the universe and experience it, then there's no reason to steal because they know down the line they're going to lose more than they stole. So if we're to understand you correctly, are religion simply the Kabbalah for different cultures? Exactly. That's how I've come to see it in 30 years in the center. Every great master, whether it's Moses, Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad, when you look at the essence of what they taught, the true essence, um, leaving aside all of the encumbrances of the tradition that's come down the line, but the true essence, it's all really love your neighbors yourself, be kind and compassionate, and understanding what goes around comes around, the law of cause and effect. So when you share the light of the creator, the universe will find a way to bring that back. Part of our issue is we're looking almost like a business deal. I'll do good for you. I expect good back from you. That's not the laws of the universe. I do good because I know it's going to come out and create a circuit and somehow come back to me, whether it's through you, through my family, through a stranger off the street. But I know the universe will bring it back to me. And so then it focuses my consciousness on just doing more acts of kindness and love and love your neighbors yourself because I know as those are being planted, if you will, in the universe, in the cosmos, they're going to create fruit somewhere down the line according to a cosmic calculation. You know, I once heard that some people are living their life and choosing their, whether they're doing good or not good, based on what the rewards would be after they die. And yet there was a saying that, that I also heard at the Jonathan Netanyahu Academy that said the result or the reward of a good life is a good life, and it doesn't matter what comes next. How does the Kabbalah address that? Well, see, that's one of the things, whether you look at the, in the various religions, there was almost a concept of if you suffer in this world, then you're going to have some kind of blessing or relief in the other world, meaning after a person passes. What the Kabbalists teach us, cause and effect. So the cause is this world. The effect is the world to come. So if today a person is planting seeds, let's say, of negativity, anger, jealousy, greed, etc., that's this world. And the world to come, the effect that will come back many times in this life will be some kind of chaos in return. Anger for anger, jealousy for jealousy, uh, animosity for animosity, etc., and then it works the opposite way also. When people are doing greater acts of care and love and tolerance and forgiveness, that's this world. They're planting the seeds and the world to come, meaning when they reap the rewards in this life of those actions. So it's been misconstrued you know, as like this world and then the world after death, a heaven, if you will. No, this is, this is the world. Our purpose is to be in this world and to reunite ourselves as one humanity, one body, if you will, of seven and a half billion parts. What I want to make clear to your listeners, Kabbalah is not teaching we're all going to be the same, clones of each other. God didn't create that. Whether you look at a human body or you look at a symphony, there are different instruments that make beautiful music when they play from one sheet music together in harmony. Our body has different organs that have different functions, but they have to work together to create vitality in a human being. The human being, if you will, of humanity, the seven and a half billion people, we've all been created with unique talents and abilities, a unique piece of that spiritual human being, and we have to learn how to play our part, be our best, and then work together with everyone else. And that's what Kabbalah, the Zohar, and especially the mission of the Kabbalah Center has been for almost 100 years now. 
to bring this wisdom to every human being so that they'll understand how they can have a better life and assisting and helping other people. It's not okay, in stay competition. Tuned. Stay tuned and know the name, know the genius in you. This show is dedicated to learning about the rules of, the, of life, as in the Zohar, and we'll break and we'll find out some of the different ways. I am this is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. Our guest tonight is Chaim Solomon, who can be reached via his website, 
Boca, B O C A, dot Kabbalah, K A B B A L A H, dot com. So before the break, we were talking about how the Kabbalah is for everyone and it's represented and all the religions are based on it. In the, the Kabbalah, it speaks very much about the importance of names. And knowing that we're doing namology science here and analyzing names on every show, would you mind sharing with us what the Kabbalah says about names? Yes. Um, the Kabbalah, you know, going back to the original DNA of the universe called Hebrew, uh, which, by the way, I don't think I mentioned before, if you study the keys of Enoch, you study the Masons, the Rosicrucians, they also teach the power of the Hebrew letters as the DNA of the universe. So what the Kabbalists explain is the word in Hebrew for your name, Shemo, is the same numerical value as Rasson, desire. So what the Kabbalists teach us is the name of a person is related and can unlock the true desire of the soul for the light of the Creator and godlike behavior and godlike blessings. And this is why traditionally, at least in the Jewish tradition, and I know in many traditions, you know, the names were changed. Uh, if a person were sick, they would either add a name or they would change a name, things like that. Maybe as time went on, not remembering why, but Kabbalistically, because if you change this sequence of letters, you're changing the energy and the frequency, which can awaken healing or blessings from the soul. Because remember, the soul has already been filled with all the potential for all the blessings we could ever imagine. That's what the Bible means when it says we're created in the image and likeness of God, means that our soul is already filled with everything. There's nothing to get. There's only what to express and what to share. Well, in the book of Genesis, immediately it says that God changes Abraham's and Sarai's name, and he makes it Abraham and Sarah. So he's adding an A-H to both names. In Namology Science, the AH says you're now on mission for God and that you're here on real purpose to have a specific purpose to help God spread his light. Right, in, right. It, when you're teaching at the Kabbalah Center, you talk about the bread of shame and how it works. And that's an interesting term to many that have not studied um, with you or at a Kabbalah center. Would you mind explaining what the bread of shame means and how that works? Sure. What, what bread of shame is, it's the concept of receiving something without earning it. And earning in spiritual terms, Kabbalistically, means it, without doing some action of sharing the light of the Creator. So when a person, I mean, it's a typical thing, that you see many times parents who've struggled to become successful in their concern or their love for their children, actually. They don't want their children to struggle, so they'll just hand out things. They'll give them what they want. They'll give them what they want. They'll give them you know, cars and money and whatever, whatever. Unfortunately, I've seen too many cases where as the children become teenagers or in their early 20s, they start to distance themselves from the parents. There can even be bitterness uh, to the point where they're, they separate from each other. The parents don't, the children don't want to have anything to do with the parents. It's a typical case of bread of shame, where the parents unknowingly are just giving, giving, giving to the child. The child is doing nothing to actually earn it by making an effort to express their godlike capabilities, and that's what bread of shame is, and it creates separation and distance so the essence of what our purpose in this world is is to remove that aspect of the bread of shame i mean think about it if god created us in its image and likeness and gave us a hundred percent fulfillment of that light of the creator already in our soul and potential that's already bread of shame so we came into this world actually for one thing and one thing alone to just share and express the light of the creator in whatever aspects we're capable, whatever our talents and abilities are uniquely, the general ideas of love, kindness, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, um, charity, uh, humility, etc. When we make an effort to express a new level of those godlike behaviors, that's when we're removing the bread of shame and we're actually drawing ourselves closer not only to the 
100% fulfillment, the light of the creator, but we're also drawing ourselves closer to other people because what goes from the heart reaches the heart. So when people are sharing love to others, they're going to reach into the soul of other people and awaken the love in them. And that's how we propose to get rid of all the hatred and the violence, not by additional hatred and violence, but when you send the light of love and the light of the creator that we can channel into the world to what we'll call the negative people of the world, we'll awaken the light inside them. And as the light awakens inside them, they're going to feel of their own volition, the necessity and the desire to act more kind and compassionate and loving and caring. So is that the purpose of creation or could you um, synthesize that for us as to the purpose of creation and why we're here? Yeah, well, we needed an arena to be able to um, express all that the creator gave us. I mean, those listeners who are parents, you know, we often look at our children as they're growing up, you know, three, four, five years old. We get a sense of what we even call it, their God-given talents and abilities. So you see a five-year-old, and you see a five-year-old has a talent for piano. What does the parent do? Ideally, it gives them piano lessons, finds a good teacher that's not teaching them per se, but drawing out of them a greater expression of what God put in there, their talent for uh, playing piano or their athletic ability or their you know, science ability, etc. So, too, the Creator implanted in each and every one of us this tremendous potential, and our whole work of being in this physical world is to express it and manifest it. So we are given talents and abilities to help other people. We are given resources and a consciousness to use to help other people. And in doing that, we receive the fulfillment and the other person receiving also support and a spiritual awakening. The light of the Creator is always win-win. It cannot be to the advantage of one to the disadvantage of another. Wouldn't that be wonderful if the entire world worked on a win-win formula? I mean, that's, that that's, love would be incredible. Sure. That's the whole mission of the center. And, you know, like I mentioned, I've been at this 30 years. When I started, we were maybe 300 people in the world, and I was actually the 14th teacher. Now we have almost 300 teachers around the world, and we probably had uh, – couple million people come through the center and learning in the centers and what's most surprising i have to be open with you i could never have envisioned it 30 years ago but we literally have students of every race nationality uh, walk of life and background in countries you wouldn't even imagine i mean i remember when we had our first student who came to one of our international events from lebanon and we have students studying in all of the Eastern Bloc countries. It's just, on the one hand, it's amazing, and it's very pleasing to hear that. And it's the advantage we have of being in the 21st century, because we have technology that I can sit here in Boca, and I can be in communication, and I can teach people all around the world over the Internet. And we have teachers in the various locations who are literally doing that. Well, and hearing about this and having this being the basis of all religions, it makes us think about the promise of a thousand years of peace and prosperity. So according to the Zohar, when does that start? Because the closer we get to it, the more and more consciousness or awakened people there need to be so that we can even have that. Sure. Well, let, let's think about it. I'm sure you have a few uh, listeners who are uh, probably in their 40s or older, you know, Years ago, there was nothing considered global. You didn't hear that word, other than maybe the last thing was World War II. That was global. Now, there's practically nothing that's not global. Global warming, economy, terrorism, everything is global, which if, means, metaphorically, the earth has been shrinking. Because like you said, as we come close to the deadline to achieve peace and harmony among humanity, the world is shrinking People are getting closer and closer, which is two things now. It either brings all the negativity into concentration, which is why the Kabbalists teach that the world, on the one hand, does get more and more chaotic. But at the same time, all the light, all the good things that people do are also concentrating. 
So it's like the gray is polarizing out into light and darkness. And if you look back, let's say 15, 20 years, you see that that's happening. The negativity is getting more and more intense, and the good is getting greater and greater. My measure, frankly, is being so many years in the centers just to see, like I mentioned, so many people of so many backgrounds coming to learn in the center, for me, is a sign of a huge spiritual awakening that's taking place worldwide, and people want the real answers. And as people have come to learn in the center from various religions, the one thing I hear in common is, now I understand my religion better. Now I understand what my clergy had been saying when they were teaching from Moses or Jesus or Buddha or Muhammad or whatever it be. Now I understand what they really meant. And now I can apply it much, much better in my life. So it's not contradictory to religion, the opposite. It's enhanced people's understanding of what they've been taught in religion. So according to counting the years by the Jewish way of how we're counting the years, we've been promised the thousand years of peace and prosperity in the year 6,000. Right. So what is the yes. current year and how close are we? Well, the current year, according to the Kabbalistic counting, is 5,777, and that's counted from Adam and Eve. All right? Now, I'm not asking all your listeners to believe, but the Kabbalists do believe that Adam and Eve existed. We do believe that the five books of Moses is uh, historically correct, but it's only like the tip of the iceberg. And the real key is the Kabbalistic understanding behind all those stories. So we're just over about 96% of the way, which is why in the last 10, 15 years, we've seen so many um, global things taking place and a greater intensity speeding up of the process, even scientifically. If you go back 50, 60 years, scientific advancement was relatively slow. And then all of a sudden, about 20 years ago, it hits like an exponential climb. And it's almost like you walk out of a store with a cell phone, it's already being replaced. You buy a computer, in two days it's already outdated. You know, technology is advancing because as we're getting closer and closer to that year 6,000, things are speeding up. And that's what we see. So the soul is awakening, but also, like we mentioned, the intensity or the concentration of good and bad is happening. The advantage of that, if you put all the bad metaphorically in one place and you turn on the light of the creator, all that darkness immediately turns to light. So the fact it's all in one place and being concentrated is an advantage if we learn how to use it. We are living in amazing times because that only gives us like 223 years more. Yes. So it's like our grandchildren's children uh, may be yep. seeing this and ushering this in. Stay tuned to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You on xzbn.net and knowthename.com. After the break, we'll find out what Chaim Solomon has in his name that assisted him that you may have in your name as well. Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. 
No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, and of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program. For the secret to everything is for you, the listener. For those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover the secret to everything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back. I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and you're listening to Know the Name, Know the Genius in You. Our guest tonight is Chaim Solomon, whose website is www.kabbalah.com. Chaim has taken his skills to a level where he's able to assist others raise their own consciousness. So to continue on this line of thought that we were talking about before the break, is the universe complicit with humans so that we all eventually win? Beautiful question. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you consider God as love, kindness, and compassion, then the fact that the creator wanted to give us all the blessings that we could ever fathom, the universe has to be tilted in our favor, and there has to be a push in that direction. And for people to understand in the physical body, and as you mentioned, I do have a a science pre-med background, pain in the body is not punishment. Pain in the body is a warning that we're doing something that goes against the harmonious or healthy way of using the body. So for example, when a person puts their hand on a hot stove, the reason we feel pain is so that we'll take our hand off the stove. It's a warning to, go, to not harm ourselves more. So spiritually, in a similar way, people's difficulties, uh, challenging situations, ideally 
should be used as a wake-up call to say, oh, I'm heading in a direction that's opposite or not going with the light of the Creator, and I want to move into that, uh, that pathway of greater God-like behavior. This is just amazing, all of it is. You know, I've heard you talk so many times, and one of the things you talk about is a proactive formula that can be used to change darkness to light. So how do you get rid of darkness, negativity, and depression? Well, like we said, it first has to start with a challenge. You know, when a person's facing a difficult situation, i.e. darkness, at that moment, it's difficult, but that's where we have to wake up and like we just mentioned, realize, wait a second, this is my opportunity to move from a path that's heading to disadvantage, away from the light of the Creator and fulfillment, to move myself into the light of the Creator and lasting fulfillment. How do I do that? Depends on the situation. If a situation is triggering in me fear, then I have to proactively transform it, make the effort to resist the fear and fearful behavior and then start acting in some way of trust and certainty in the light of the Creator. If I'm being awakened to anger because someone did something that triggers the anger in me, then for me it's a sign that I'm still holding anger, which is blocking my blessings. It's blocking the light of the Creator from bringing me unfathomable good in my life, so I want to remove that blockage. And the only way to do that is by transmuting the anger and angry behavior into some form of compassion, tolerance, kindness, understanding. And in that effort, I break the blockage of the anger that's holding back the light of my soul, and now my light from my soul can be projected into my life. And again, it's not about the immediate result, because that person who triggered my anger may still be acting in a rotten way, but as I'm projecting my light to them and through them to the world, I know that circuitry of the universe that's somewhere, somehow going to bring that good and that transformation back to me as some form of blessing, clarity, understanding in my life. And so the formula is simply that. Stop before you give in to a behavior based on uh, anger, fear, jealousy, or ego. Think consciously. How can I act in a godlike way towards this person that I'm, as we call it, sending light through that person out to everybody? And at least from my point of view, the situation is transformed. I can see good coming my way, even if the situation looks the same or the person still behaves in a negative way, because I know it's really only between me and the universe. What I put out is what the universe reflects back to me like a mirror. We could be standing in front of the same mirror, you and I, but I see my reflection, you see yours. If you raise a hand, you'll see that. If I raise a different hand, I'll see that. So it's really, a, in essence, a one-on-one -on -one with every other person in the world as an opportunity for me to express some aspect of what God put inside of me. So my life is based on my behavior. Yours is on yours. I'm the center of my universe. You're the center of yours. And I don't mean in an ego way, but understanding that as I turn around in the 360 degrees, I'm seeing opportunities and reflections of me. And so where I don't like what I see, I have an opportunity to express my godlike nature. Where I do like what I see, I can express maybe a higher level, but it's already filled with light. Our work is to put light wherever we see darkness so why is it so hard to reveal our own light it, because as you're speaking it would seem like it would be so easy yes well how many of the listeners have a bad habit and if you think about when you're under a little stress you immediately get a thought of giving into that bad habit whether it's eating something that's not on your diet whether it's smoking a cigarette whatever it may be and we have a voice in our head that I call the opponent or the voice of the bad habit that's yelling at us, give in to the bad habit, eat that chocolate chip cookie, go smoke that cigarette, you know, whatever our bad habit may be. But on the other side of our head, we have the voice of the creator saying, no, this is your opportunity to express a greater godlike behavior. And it's that battle which is um, focused in our head. That's the real battleground. That's where our life is based. 
So if the bad habit voice wins, we're going to give into the bad habit and do the negative behavior and then regret it. When the good habit, the voice of the light wins, then we're not going to give in the bad habit. We're going to transmute the darkness to light in our behavior, and that's going to bring us closer and closer to lasting eternal fulfillment. So you kind of address this in one of your other answers, but why would we send light to people that we don't like? So that I have a greater sense of peace and harmony. If light is being projected out of me, then I'm feeling the light, a greater sense of peace, serenity, compassion. If I am projecting anger or animosity, that's what I'm experiencing. So the first thing is it's to my benefit to act more kind and compassionate, more godlike, we would say, with a greater love your neighbor as yourself. I'm the first beneficiary. The beauty of the light being win-win is the only way I can have that sense of true peace if I'm sharing my light in godlike ways, compassion, forgiveness, tolerance towards others. So they're also receiving, whether they realize it or not, a spiritual awakening. Because remember, they have light in their soul. I have light in my soul just waiting to be activated. So if I'm sending them light, if I'm praying or meditating, as people might consider it, for the good of another person, that person I don't like, I can wake up the light in their soul and let them help them reveal what God put in there. Remember, God only creates perfection. So the most negative person we can think of on earth actually is a being of light hidden in a shell of darkness. So by sending them light or wishing them well, we can actually help them break the shell of darkness and reveal their light beingness. And that's how we're going to transform the planet from chaos to order from hatred and animosity to peace and love. A big challenge for you in one minute. Yes. You've mentioned yes. that every soul is filled with light. So and mm -hmm. how do people commit these horrific acts if every soul is filled with light? And can you answer that question in one minute? Yes, because every act of negativity from the minor to the major puts a, a curtain, if you will, over of darkness over the soul so like saran wrap if you pile on layers and layers and layers of saran wrap each one seeming to be transparent eventually with a hundred or two hundred layers it will be obscure it'll obscure the light so when a person is negative it's because they put so many layers over their soul that the light of their soul doesn't project out and all they're doing is caught up in the ego and the self-centeredness and that creates negativity so by sending light to their soul, it pierces those shells, helps to break that and awaken and empower the light of their soul to be stronger and then awaken them to start breaking through their curtains of negativity. You have amazing knowledge, Haim. Thank you so much for being with us. Be prepared, to be, be prepared to be excited about learning new ways at looking at old topics when you experience Haim Solomon's work. His website, again, is www.kabbalah.com. And for general information on the Kabbalah, that's where you would go. And www.boka.kabbalah.com for specific to where the Kabbalah Center is that Hayam's at. Hayam Solomon excels at explaining complicated ideas in an understandable manner. This is found in the letter combination of H-A in his first name. So A-H is totally different. We talked about that also tonight, that that means you're on mission for God. But when it's H-A in the name, it means that you have the ability to explain complicated things in a simple way that people can understand. Do you want to know where your genius lies? I'm Sharon Lynn Wyeth, host of the radio show, Know the Name, Know the Genius in You, which can be heard every weekday at various hours right here on xzbn.net radio and X-Zone radio station, and on knowthename.com. Tune in to hear the fascinating ways other people discovered the genius in themselves and what they were able to accomplish. In each upcoming show, you'll hear clues on how you can recognize your own innate genius. If you wish to know more about your name and how you can discover your innate genius, go to the website knowthename.com and give yourself the gift of a session to find out what your name says about you and how knowing what your name means can help you live to your best and highest. 
This is Sharon Lynn Wyeth signing off.